In this part, we are going to create update method to update the values using our API. For that, create a new file in your lib folder. I'll call it edit page. Inside this file, create a stateful widget. I'll name it edit page. Create scaffold. Copy the app bar widget from main page and paste it here inside the edit page. I'll change the title to edit page. Inside this page, we need the user object on which client clicks. For that, create a user object property and import model class. Also make this property required in the constructor. Now go to your main page. In your list tile widget, create on tap property and use navigator.push method to redirect to edit page. Import the edit page library. Now, pass the user object to edit page using data index to send user object of clicked user. Let's test it out first. It is being redirected to edit page which means data is passing successfully. Now, we need to display the data, so we can edit it. For that, Create padding widget inside the body and give the padding. Create form builder widget inside your padding widget. Import the form builder library. Inside form builder, create a column. Inside column, create form builder text field and give it a name. Now, use form builder validators to validate the data. Pass it a list of validation requirement. We'll only use form builder validators required method to make this text field required. Also, use input decoration property and give it label text. Now, copy this whole text field widget and paste it below to create another text field. Name of it will be address and label will be also address. Validators will stay same. Create some spacing between the text fields using sized box widget. Now, in form builder widget, create the initial value property. This property accepts map of string and dynamic data type. For that, use curly braces. Use text field names to pass the initial values. First text field name is name. Give it the value name property of the user object. Pass the user address to second text field too. Now, we need a submit button. For that, copy the bottom navigation bar from the main page and paste it inside the edit page. Leave the unpressed empty for a few moments. Change the button title too. Now, open your API handler class. Create a method of return type, future HTTP response. I'll call it update user. Also make it async method. To update user, we need user ID and user object. So, this method will take user ID and user object as parameters and also make these required. Convert string type base URI to URI data type like this. To update user, API takes user ID as parameter in URI. So, pass the user ID like this too. Create a property response of data type HTTP response. Return the response. I'll use trycatch block to make API call to avoid app crashes. Use response to store the response, then use http.put method and pass URI it. Also pass the header same as we passed in get method. Otherwise, data won't update. We also need to pass user object. For that, use body and pass user object and also encode it in JSON format before submitting. I'll not handling any exceptions, so I'll just return response. Now, go back to edit page. Create form key for our form builder. It will be a global key of type form builder state. Pass this form key in your form builder. Now, create an instance of API handler class to get access. Create a method of void type. I'll call it update data. And also make it async. 
Inside this method, use if statement to check the form status. To ensure there are no errors, use form key.currentState.save and validate method. Create a data property and give it the form value using form key. Create user property and pass it the user object and also pass values to user object. User ID will remain same while other values will change. Data property is of type map, so we need to use brackets to get values. Now, call update user method from API handler class and pass it user ID and user object. After that, use navigator.pop method to go back to main page. If you want to get response, create property of type HTTP response. Assign it the value of update user method because it returns the response. However, I'm not using its value right now. Restart your application to test it. Sorry, I forgot to call the update data method on button click. Now, test it again. As I'm not using any state management library, I have to refresh the page to get the latest values. As you can see, values are updated. With that, our update method is also complete. In next part, we'll learn to add data using post method. So, stay tuned.